Hello and welcome to Social Media Ethics for Real Estate. My name is Marky Lemons Rao and I am a social media speaker, but I'm also a realtor member. And as a realtor member, I must adhere to the code of ethics of the National Association of Realtors. Today, there are over 1 million members of the National Association of Realtors. The National Association of Realtors is one of the largest trade organizations in the U.S. And we are proud members. Our goal is to excel and exceed expectations. I have a favorite saying that I use in class uh, by a young lady named Erin. And that saying is, don't say anything online that you wouldn't want plastered on a billboard with your face on it. Think about this. People today believe that they have privacy in a social world and online. However, from my mobile device, I can tap the home screen at the same time I'm tapping the on off button and I can take a screenshot of anything that I'm looking at. And so you might have privacy settings set up on your social networking sites, but it doesn't mean that one of your friends can't take a screenshot and share exactly what you've said in a private or what you believe to be a closed community. So you never want to say anything online that you wouldn't want plastered on a billboard with your face on it. Not only can someone screenshot something that you said on a social networking site, they can also take a screenshot of any text that you sent them or any emails. So make sure that all communications you want to censor and ensure that it is adhering to the code of ethics and license law in the state where you practice real estate. Anything historically that you wouldn't do offline, you don't want to do it online. Because in the past, no one might know what you're saying, but you want to assume that everyone has some sort of recording device, whether that's video or audio recording, whether they're taking a photo, you are always on camera. Act like it. Today, our learning objectives are, upon completion of the Social Media Ethics for Real Estate, you will be able to define social media. You will be able to identify two key aspirational concepts found in the preamble to the Realtor's Code of Ethics. You will be able to describe general business ethics and compare and contrast that to the Realtor's Code of Ethics. You will be able to explain the concepts established in Articles 1, 11, 12, and 15 of the Code of Ethics. You will be able to summarize possible violations of the Code of Ethics specifically related to Articles 1, 11, 12, and 15 after we review case studies. You will be able to explain the professional standards process for enforcing the Code of Ethics. The reason we focus on Articles 1, 11, 12, and 15, because when we're looking at social media, all of the 17 articles of the Code of Ethics doesn't apply. So the articles that do apply are 1, 11, 12, and 15. I would also state that you could add Article 10, but for the purpose of today, we will not include Article 10, but we do focus on Article 10 in the Social Media Fair Housing Legal Issues and License Law webinar. Social media is a changing landscape. Social media has changed the real estate market, the real estate industry, and the real estate 
client. As a market, we participate in social media every single day in some capacity. When was the last time you left home without your mobile device? I'm sure there's some of you shaking your head like never. And if you do leave home without your mobile device, you're likely to turn your car right back around and go back home because our mobile devices have everything on them. They have our telephone numbers, they have directions, they have email addresses, they tell us where to eat, they tell us where to stop, they tell us who just got married, they tell us who is currently in a complicated relationship. So social media is a changing landscape that has changed the real estate market. So as a result, our clients have also changed. They're researching us before they ever deal with us. And if they don't see that we have a online presence, some of them aren't likely to do business with us. One of the most dangerous phrases in the language is, we've always done it this way. As a realtor member, I've been in the world of real estate since 1999 because I came into the world of real estate as a residential mortgage lender. And I remember there was a time when I would run back to the office in order to get my faxes or I had to be in the office in order to check my voicemail. Well, today, we don't do that. We don't go to the office to pick up faxes. We're utilizing cloud storage and tools like Google Drive and Dropbox, and we're sending uh, documents to be signed via DocuSign or dot loop. Nothing is done the way it used to be done. I remember my first email address and it was AOL. And I personally don't use AOL anymore, I use Gmail. And I remember when we had dial up and I had a computer in a little nook in my kitchen and I would wait for that page to load and I could actually go cook a full fledged meal before that page would download. And so nothing is done the way it used to be done because technology has changed every aspect of the real estate transaction. It's kind of funny. Uh, I'm in the state of Illinois, and I remember when we first had the ability to take a photo of a check and deposit it because in our state, our buyers would bring a cashier's check to the closing table, and the cashier's check would be made out to themselves, from themselves. But someone got slick and they decided that they would redeposit their check back into their account because of their Chase mobile app. And as a result, it changed how title companies accept funds at closing, where you used to make a cashier's check out to yourself from yourself. Now you make that check directly out to the title company to prevent anyone from depositing that check back into their personal account. There are some new rules that we must recognize as it pertains to social media and technology. Those rules are immediacy. We, when we walk into a venue, a restaurant, a convention center, a hotel, one of the first things we ask is, do you have free Wi-Fi? What is the Wi-Fi code? And the reason is we want to connect our devices. We want to check in on people. We want to follow up with people. We want instant access to information. And if by chance our pages don't load quickly, we're shaking our devices, we're checking to see if the Wi-Fi network is working correctly because it's all about immediacy. Frequency. I happened to graduate from high school in 1988 and there was a time that 
I would see my classmates every 10 years at our class reunion. Well, as a result of social media, the people who at one point I was seeing every 10 years for the first 20 years out of high school, I'm now receiving three, four updates from them every single day. I know what they've eaten for breakfast. I know if they're lactose intolerant. I know when they're going on vacation. I also know who is a new grandparent. So we used to maybe see people every 10 years, contingent on how you knew them, where now because of social media and technology, we're seeing some of these people multiple times every single day. Longevity, whatever you put on the internet, it will outlive you, okay? In the world of real estate, we do a lot of direct mail pieces. We have billboards. We have bus benches, all these different tools that we use for marketing. And if you're doing direct mail pieces, people probably discard your mail and it might stay on their kitchen table a mm, couple of days. Well, if you make a post on the Internet, think about it as permanent. OK, and it will outlive you. There is a give to get on the Internet. If I like your post, I want you to like my post. However, as a realtor or a licensed real estate professional, we cannot do a give to get. And the reasoning is there are certain things we are prohibited from doing based on the fact that we are licensed and realtor members. So before you hit the like button, the share button, or make a comment on anyone's post on any social networking channel or social media channel, I want you to always ask yourself, does that post adhere to the rules, the regulations, and the code of ethics that I must follow? And if it doesn't, then do not say or do anything. People want you to show a genuine interest. Now, what I tend to do is I definitely take a look at all of my feeds. I know what's going on in people's lives so that when I see them, I'm able to interact with them in real time. So if someone um, is a new grandparent, when I see them, I'll say, how's the baby? How are you enjoying being a grandparent? Or you send people direct messages. So you want to show a genuine interest in people online. Sometimes there's too much enjoyment and fun when it comes to social media and technology. Have you ever gone to Facebook to do some research or to look for a telephone number? And then you see a picture of interest. And as a result, one hour later, you're still looking at photos and you've never retrieved the telephone number or whatever content you were looking for because social media is social, right? You want to set timers. You want to save information that is of interest. You might even use a third party tool like Evernote to save it as a note. You want to limit the enjoyment and fun of social media because it's definitely a business tool. And I'm not telling you not to have fun and I'm not telling you to not enjoy it. You just want to limit it and focus on developing your business and then come back to the fun and enjoyment. Because of the immediacy, we also now have instant information access. We know TMI, too much information about the people we're doing business with, about our fellow realtors. I can find out who owns what property, who their current lender is, what's their outstanding principal balance, instant 
information access. But because it's instant information access, we have the ability to find more details out about potential buyers and sellers and their need to buy or sell real estate. And then authenticity. Perception is reality. Are you being authentic online or are you sending your hmm, other self to show up? Or uh, some of us have two personalities, right? You want to display authenticity so that when people see you face to face, they know who you are. When we think about that longevity, I go back uh, to 1989. My mother was a pioneer of the food truck business in the Chicagoland area, but unfortunately she passed away in 2006. And my youngest son never had the opportunity to meet my mother. So I wanted my youngest son to have knowledge about his grandmother's contribution to society. I decided to do a Google search of my mother. And as you can see here, there's an article from 1989. <clears throat> I apologize. The article from 1989 is still on the internet today. So the article has outlived my mother. Okay, longevity. Think about your legacy, what you want to leave behind. Social media is going to be a component of that legacy. Well, as Realtor members, the National Association of Realtors was formed in 1908 in Chicago, Illinois. And by 1913, they had adopted the Code of Ethics. The National Association of Realtors established the Code of Ethics to establish professional standards of conduct. It was one of the first ethical codes for business after medicine, engineering, and law. The National Association of Realtors Code of Ethics focuses on service to the public and a commitment to professionalism. In addition, it includes duties. And as a realtor, we have duties to our clients. We have duties to the customer. We have duties to the public. And we have duties to our fellow realtors. And those rules apply whether we're conducting business online or offline. When you think about ethics, ethics often wants to distinguish between right and wrong, but it's moral principles that govern a person or group's behavior. So the code of ethics governs a realtor's Actions, okay, not only as a realtor do we have to adhere to the code of ethics, we have to adhere to the license law in the state where we practice real estate. If the people cannot trust their realtor to do the job for which it exists, which is to protect and promote the best interest of the client, all else is lost in real estate. We are to protect and promote the best interest of the client at all times as a realtor member. Because not only are we bound by the code of ethics, but if we protect the consumer, we also protect the opportunity. <clears throat> when you're working with a buyer, and you're out on a showing appointment, you want to advise that buyer before you ever go out on a showing appointment 
about what to look out for. The fact that they don't need to discuss their real estate transactions online. Uh, the fact that when we are inside of a property, make the assumption that everyone has a nanny cam and they're likely to record you. Therefore, dear buyer, don't discuss your offer inside of someone else's home. Dear buyer, please refrain from making facial expressions or showing excitement about the property. And so if we are educating our buyers and sellers about the process, we in turn are protecting the consumer, which also protects the opportunity and it doesn't hinder our client's negotiating position when they decide to negotiate on an offer. The distinction between the private and the professional has largely broken down online, and you should assume that your professional and personal social media activity will be treated as one, no matter how hard you try to keep them separate. You should also be aware that even if you make use of privacy settings, anything you post on a social media site may be made public. Remember those screenshots. The fact that I can tap my mobile device and essentially take a picture of anything you've said potentially done. Think about the nanny cams that are on the premises. The fact that not only are you a realtor today, you're also a journalist. You're able to record anything at any place unless rules in your state prohibit you from doing so. <clears throat> A clear example of this is the managing editor of the Washington Post thought that his tweets were protected through his Twitter sentence. He thought that only 90 of his friends could see his post. He was wrong. And in 2009, he made a negative comment. And as the result of making the negative comment, someone shared his tweets. And he was later chastised, okay? And they temporarily, temporarily shut down his Twitter account. So this is the managing editor of the Washington Post. Every single day, someone in our country loses their job because of something they've said or done via social media. And sometimes they don't even know it's on social media because everyone's a journalist and everyone's reporting what everyone else is saying and doing. There isn't a distinction between private and professional online anymore. While the Code of Ethics establishes obligations that may be higher than those mandated by law, in any instance where the Code of Ethics and the law conflicts, the Code of Ethics must yield to the law. What I often tell my fellow realtors is license law will always trump the Code of Ethics, but to ensure that you're adhering to all rules and regulations that apply to you, Always follow the highest level of rules so that you are always protected. So license law always trumps the code of ethics. Adhere to the highest level of rules so that you're always protected. You don't want social media to hinder your ability to practice real estate and or be a realtor member. As realtors accepting this standard as their own, realtors pledge to observe its spirits in all their activities, whether conducted personally, through associates or others, or via technological means, and to conduct their business in accordance with the tenants. Technological means and related terms include, but are not limited to, the internet, internet-based websites, all forms of internet communication, email, 
fax mail correspondence, telephony, and all other forms of distance communication. The National Association of Realtors amended the Code of Ethics in 2007 to include by technological means. So what is social networking? Well, as realtors, we've always been into social networking, okay? Um, if you look down here at the bottom of my screen, you see Twitter. <clears throat> and this is vintage social networking. So we've been social networking our entire careers. When I take a look at this, uh, has anyone ever used a post-it note? I'm pretty sure you have. Well, if you look at that post-it note, that's probably uh, equivalent to a tweet. It should be roughly 140 characters or less. OK, there was a time that some of us wrote in our journals, right? Well, everything that we've ever written down on a piece of paper, maybe a composition book or in a journal, that's a WordPress. That is a blog. OK, Instagram. There are 300 million users on Instagram that are loading, right? Millions of photos every single day. Well, we used to have the Polaroid, right? So we've been on Instagram our entire lives. When you think about LinkedIn, think about that Rolodex. Normally it was black and it was sitting on your desk, right? Well, we've taken that Rolodex, we've put it online, and actually it's on steroids because now we know how everyone is connected inside of our Rolodex where we might not have known that in the past. Pinterest is a virtual pin board and some of us still have cork boards on our wall that we pin our ideas to. OK, uh, and so when we think about social networking, it is the ability for people to share information, right, with people who they're interested in or who are interested in them. We've been doing social networking our entire careers. Uh, we know how to do it quite well offline. Now they've given us tools to enhance it online. Social media, social networking really isn't new. Because in 1995, classmates.com hit the market. I remember classmates.com in 1995. Uh, I had an AOL email address. I had dial up. I would come home and look at classmates to see that cute guy that I graduated with from high school to see what he was doing. And it would take forever for the page to load. Well, if we think about a classmates.com, every single social networking site we use has a little bit of classmates.com in it. It tells you who you know based on your email address, and you have the ability to communicate with them now in real time from your mobile device. See, in 1995, we couldn't connect with them from the mobile device. I think I still had a brick mobile phone. It wasn't in a case, but it was still a brick. It blows my mind what happens on the internet in one minute, okay? Um, there are over 2 million Google searches performed every 60 seconds. There are officially more mobile devices on planet Earth than there are people. OK, and so we are connected. We're using these tools and we're using them. And it's a global marketplace. When you think about social media, we no longer live in a society that's Monday through Friday, nine to five. Social media has no time zones. OK, we're now collaborating internationally and there isn't a nine to five. So a lot happens in an internet minute, okay? Uh, when we look at Pandora, 61,141 hours of music is played every minute. There are over 100 new LinkedIn accounts set up. So 100 new accounts occurred in the time it took me to say that. Why have people gravitated 
to online social networks? Well, they've gravitated there because one, they're interactive, okay? Uh, two, people respond better. Three, it has the opportunity to go viral. So because we're in an international society online, we now can do business across any border. It also helps to build community. Businesses have moved to social media. When I think about people responding better, um, in the city of Chicago, we have aldermen and aldermen basically oversee a geographic area and the people of that area vote them into office. So we have gone through a election or re-election process and one of my aldermen got reelected, but he has an entirely new staff. I wanted to do a program with that alderman. So instantly I thought to myself, oh, my God, I have to go to this man's office. I have to befriend his new staff. Oh, this is going to take all day. I need to stop and buy donuts for these ladies, maybe some coffee so that I can go there, befriend them. They will call or email him. He will call or email back and I can get the answer that I desire. And then it hit me, Marky, you're friends with this alderman on Facebook. So I got up one morning and I sent my alderman a direct message on Facebook. In under 30 minutes, before his office even opened, I had a response with who I needed to contact, how I should contact the person, and the fact that I could tell the person he sent me. So your politicians use social media, your CEOs use social media, your pastor, your priest, they all utilize social media. And because they have their mobile devices in their hand, they're responding better because they don't have to stop talking or they could be in a crowded space and still send you a text message or respond to a question you might have. An example of all of this occurring in one post, I have some silly photos I take of myself when I go to have my photos done. And on this one, I've done word overlay. I use tools like Photo Grid or PixArt. And here I state, realtor is pronounced realtor, not realtor. I'm just saying. So on the left hand side, you're seeing a screenshot of Instagram on my mobile device. And I repeat exactly what I've said in my description. Well, I often share my post from Instagram over to Facebook. And in the yellow, what you will see is the first time I posted this photo, I received 173 likes and 44 comments. Now, as a result of doing this, I know exactly who the 173 likes came from. I know who's made the comments. Over time, this photo has had over 700 likes. And so I would say it was a pretty good post. So let's just go back one second. Interactive, people respond better, viral activity, build communities, right? This post has all of that. I know who is interactive. I know who responded. Where when we're sending out direct mail pieces, we have no idea how people have responded. But online, we know who's responding in real time. And all the social media channels have analytics built into it. So we can actually go back and take a look at the analytics if we want to uh, dig a little deeper. Now, even though social media is great, there are definitely some issues that come with utilizing social networks, social media, social media marketing. The very first thing are your postings. If you don't have a strategic plan around social media, Often you can get caught off guard and start posting things that you have no business posting. So you want to be clear that anything you post, you are identifying 
who you are if it pertains to real estate and that you also identify your brokerage. Okay, so we want to be clear about all of our postings. The next problem is website integration. This is when I tell people, you better always be where you said you were going to be and doing what it is you said you were going to do or else website integration, right? These different sites and apps uh, will get you in trouble. What about the links? Oh, you got to be careful with the links. You want to send people where you told them you were going to send them. Test the links before you post them because you never want someone to or send anybody over to girls gone wild. So always check your links and send people where they believe they're going. Be careful about your updates. Now I'm infamous for checking in. I do a lot of location based check ins because people know where I'm at anyway. It's public where I am. OK, because I'm teaching a class and they have a flyer and a registration page. So there's never a secret where Marky is. And I do location based check in. Well, a couple of years ago, I took my husband with me to work in California and I took a photo of the bay. And what ended up happening before I posted the photo, I realized that in the photo you could see the reflection of my husband in the window. Now I decided not to post that photo at that time because people would know that not only wasn't I at home, but neither was my husband. And that was a safety issue. So you want to look at whatever your updates are. Are you where you're supposed to be? And look at that photo for the details um, because safety is an issue in the world of real estate. You also want to take a look at your connections on Facebook. I used to have the family category where you could come and you could see all of my relatives, whether they were lemons, rouse, the porters, uh, anybody who was related to me, you would be able to see them. Well, I actually went and I I didn't mute it. Right. I made it uh, not visible because I don't want you to know about all of my family members. OK, um, I don't need you to know about my crazy cousins or the fact that more than one of my cousins might be crazy or heck uh, that I might be crazy as a result of having crazy relatives or better yet, maybe I made them crazy. Uh, so with that being said, be careful about your connections. Also, your friends need to respect what you do for a living. And if they are radical, right, and they're saying things that violate the code of ethics, that violate fair housing, you want to be careful about that. OK, and so your postings, website integration, links, updates and connections can present an issue. You want to rectify that situation. So what you see before you is one post that when I go back and I look at the issues, right, the links, the website integration, the connections, this addresses everyone. It actually happened to me. So I have the opportunity to travel across the country teaching not only realtors, but people inside of the promotional products industry. And so last year I was off to Texas and my plane had landed and I was at the airport. Of course, I'm the frantic person who immediately turns on their phone. OK, I, I do definitely listen to the rules. So I turn my phone on. The first update I receive is the update on the left and it's via Twitter. But it came from Foursquare and what it says is uh, it's from Raymond and it says en route to the SMSS summit with Marky Lemons. So instantly when I see this on my phone, I look to my left and I look to my right because I'm not here with Raymond. And I had told my husband I was going to Dallas, Texas for work 
by myself. So instantly I'm like, oh no, my husband's going to think I'm here with Raymond. And I wasn't there with Raymond. Now, Raymond and I was at the same place at the same time, but we weren't there together. Now, this is a result of website integration, how Foursquare talks to Twitter, the fact that we both share uh, or use the same social. Uh, well, this not even. Well, yeah, it could be. It has a social element to it. Uh, using the same tool, it put us together. So what ended up happening after I realized that Raymond wasn't sitting to my left or to my right, he wasn't even on the same airplane as I, I looked up who Raymond was and I started a conversation with him. So after his post, what you'll see on the right hand side is my Twitter stream. And I say to Raymond, hey, let's do lunch sometimes in Chicago. I can learn a lot from you. I'm heading to ASI Dallas to talk social media. And then he says, well, Marky, when is ASI Dallas? I said, ah, oh, it's Tuesday through Thursday at the Dallas Convention Center. He then tells me, send me a link to the event, ASI Dallas. I would like to see what you're speaking about. We should connect in Chicago. And I actually sent him the link. OK, and so you don't want to have issues because of your postings, website integration, links, updates or connections. Uh, you want to make sure that this never happens to you or that you're always where you said you were going to be doing what it is you said that you were going to do so that you have absolutely no problems. There are some self-regulatory principles. One, education. Uh, I've made mistakes with the code of ethics, and as a result, I had to go back, I had to read, I had to highlight, and I had to implement some steps. Another one is transparency. People want transparency. They want to know what you're doing how you're doing it. And as a result, you should give people consumer control, allow them to opt in, opt out, interact with you uh, if they so desire. So education, transparency, and consumer control. As a realtor, we need to maintain, and I added the word improve. So maintain and improve the standards of our calling. Include the risk and benefits associated with relevant technology. You want to know those risks and the benefits. And as a result, you want to improve how you're implementing and utilizing them in your business. Ethics rules apply when you use social media to promote your business. Be careful. Do not call yourself a specialist unless you are one. Also, be careful what others post on your sites. You want to have the ability to take down items that go against the code of ethics, that go against license law, that might potentially lead to a fair housing violation. As a realtor, you want to strive to become and remain informed on issues affecting real estate. One of the tools that I use is google.com forward slash alerts, alerts with an S on the end. So anytime anyone uh, says something about me, there's an article, there's a video, um, hmm, I write a blog post, then I will receive notification. That's one of the ways that you can become and remain informed, not only about yourself, but also about real estate. So set up Google alerts by going to www.google.com forward slash alerts. The term realtor stands for competency, fairness, high integrity, moral conduct, and business relations. The code of ethics must be reasonably construed with the law 
and we must always respect the law and note that the code of ethics must always yield to the law because the yield trumps the code. That said the yield trumps the code because law, right, <laughs> trumps the code. <clears throat> The code of ethics imposes duties that are above and in addition to duties imposed by law or regulation. The code of ethics often restates certain fundamental legal principles. As a practical matter, social media is now a regulated industry and all stakeholders are responsible for compliance with FTC guides. As a result, all marketers, agencies, and brands must develop a culture of compliance. And so not only do we have licensed law, we have the code of ethics, and now we have FTC guides. I am a realtor and I live by the code. Article 1. When representing a buyer, seller, landlord, tenant, or other client as an agent, realtors pledge themselves to protect and promote the interest of their client. I want to take a look at Article 1 case study. Carl Rao, a broker with Inman Real Estate Services and Sales, posted a photo of an executed sales contract on Facebook. Broker Rao did not have the buyers to sign a buyer's agreement. The buyers have introduced Broker Rao as their agent to their friends. The property has not closed and it is not public information that there is a pending transaction. So let's assume you see the following. This was a Facebook post by a licensee out of California, and the post stated, boom, offer accepted seven million cash. Now the stressful part, getting it closed. Bada boom, bada bing. And below what you see is a copy of an executed sales contract. Uh, it had the buyer's name, the seller's name, the property address. So what I want to ask you is, do you believe that this agent was protecting and promoting the best interest of their client? So we're going to go back to the questions. Is broker row in violation of Article 1? Of course because he did not protect and promote the best interest of the client. Also, this is a potential license law issue, okay? So we don't post executed sales contract on the internet. It discloses the information and confidential information of the parties to the transaction. Uh, if you answered yes, please explain why. Well, because it exposes the client and it doesn't protect and promote. Broker Rao primary obligation is going to be to the client. Always the client comes first. Now, in some situations, uh, rules stipulate, yes, the client comes first. But if the client asks you to do anything that is Ill illegal, unlawful, then you are to decline. So they can tell you what to do as long as it is legal and ethical. What would Broker Rao need and from whom to make his actions acceptable? He would need written consent from all parties to the transaction in order to post that information. OK, well, this isn't the only time that someone buying an expensive property has been leaked on the Internet. <clears throat> Jennifer Hudson mansion deal falls apart. Jennifer Hudson was slated to buy a multi-million dollar property in Burr Ridge, a suburb of the city of Chicago. However, because of the media speculation around said property, Jennifer Hudson did not close on that home. Jennifer Hudson does live in a suburb of the city of Chicago. She just simply doesn't live in this house. And this was a property that was listed at 2.8 seven nine five million dollars a deal that did not happen um, because people are sharing information 
So tell your clients do not discuss their real estate transaction online. I can't stress that enough. Don't talk about you found your ideal home. Uh, even be careful about the post. The post. Huh? Be careful about the pictures you post while inside your own home. It's just something that you don't want anyone having access to, uh, especially if they don't have good intentions. Article 11 states, realtors shall not undertake to provide specialized professional services concerning a type of property or service that is outside their field of competency unless they engage the assistance of one who is competent on such type of property or service or unless the facts are fully disclosed to the client. With that being said, when we're thinking about services, uh, technology falls under service. Now, I don't have any case studies to support Article 11. Most of the case studies that you would see or standards of practice have something to do with value and holding yourself out as an appraiser. And so uh, the issue potentially with Article 11 is that your state views you as being competent when they issue you a license because you've passed with the minimum score that the state requires. So the competency issue is a little complicated when you are licensed individuals that met the competency requirement of the state where you practice real estate. Article 12 states that we have to be honest and truthful in all communications. We have to present a true picture in advertising, marketing, and other representations. We have to ensure that our status as a real estate professional is readily apparent in advertising, marketing, and representations. I was on Instagram one day, and on Instagram, I decided to do a hashtag search for the word realtor. And there are hundreds of thousands, uh, maybe today, millions of photos that are tagged with the term realtor on Instagram. So on the left hand side, you see a screenshot of my mobile device and some of the terms that people are using. They're using hashtag realtor. They're using hashtag realtors. They're using realtor life. They're using realtor problems. And then on the right hand side, what you see are different photos that are tagged with realtor. Here's the problem. When I looked at those photos, only one out of four of the photos did the realtor member ensure that their status as a real estate professional was readily apparent and present, right, a true picture in advertising and marketing. They did not uh, ensure their status. They did not identify the fact of who they are and what they do. Also, people are sharing the photos of others without their written permission. So you want to go back and check your state rules, but remember, you want to act in accordance with the highest rule and authority. There are some regulatory compliance issues because people will often say, well, I made a post and uh, I wasn't practicing real estate at the time. No, no, no. You're always licensed. You're always a realtor member unless you fail to renew your license or, right, um, you're no longer a member because you failed to pay your annual dues. You're licensed. OK, so what is advertising by definition? They consider a message that is designed to attract public attention or patronage to a product of a business and advertisement. It is narrowed down to whether you do this directly or indirectly. So when we're making post and it is you, we want it to attract public attention that is considered advertising. Okay. Realtors intending to share or sell consumer information gathered via the internet shall disclose that possibility in a reasonable and readily apparent manner. 
So if you have a website and you have a lead capture form on it, you can't just share the person's information that completed the form. You have to get their consent and you have to disclose that information to them. If not, you will be violating the Graham-Leach-Bliley Act, which was established to protect the personal information of its customers from being released, email addresses, home phone numbers, things of that nature. You want to provide clear and conspicuous disclosure because it is vital and essential. Let's take a look at Article 12 case study. Realtor Allen of Get It Done Real Estate is a forward-thinking broker who is abreast of current marketing tools for real estate. Realtor Allen is a big fan of Instagram and markets listings daily via Instagram. The properties that Realtor Allen markets are not listings of his sponsoring broker, but listings of top firms in the areas that he serves. Realtor Allen learned today that Big Realty has filed a complaint against him and his sponsoring broker, Get It Done Real Estate, for violating Article 12. Big Realty has stated that Realtor Allen and Get It Done Real Estate have advertised a property without authority and presents a false picture on Instagram and the Internet to potential buyers and sellers. During the hearing, it is revealed that in Realtor Allen's marketing, he has never disclosed the name of the real estate firm he is affiliated with and none of his posts linked to a display that includes the firm he is affiliated with. So I have an example here of uh, Realtor Allen of Get It Done Real Estate. Um, in this post, we see that Realtor Allen states, if you're interested in buying, selling, or leasing real estate in the Chicago land area, he does not identify himself as a licensee. He does not identify the company that he works for. He has these wonderful photos, photo collages, word overlay, but they aren't his listings. Okay. And so let's go back and take a look at some of these questions. Has Realtor Allen violated Article 12? Most definitely, because he hasn't painted a true picture in his advertising. The next question states, which standard of practice applies to this situation? Well, standard of practice 12-4, Realtor shall not offer to sell, lease, or advertise property without authority. So yes, he's violated Standard of Practice 12-4. Let's take a look at Standard of Practice 12-5. Realtors shall not advertise nor permit any person employed by or affiliated with them to advertise real estate services or listed properties in any medium, okay, without disclosing the name of the realtor's firm in a reasonable and readily apparent manner. Yes. Standard of practice 12-5 has also been violated. When we take a look at standard of practice 12-10, realtor's obligation to present a true picture, right, in their advertising and representation to the public includes internet content posted and the URLs and domain names they use, okay? And so yes, all of the above have been violated. <clears throat> Is there anything else Realtor Allen may have violated? Yes, Realtor Allen, through his two posts, may have violated license law. Here's a great example of what to do. Um, there is a top producing realtor in the Chicago land area, actually Jolly Ed, who made this post on her Facebook page. She has several photos, but at the bottom of her post, it states advertise with permission and she gives the person's name. Always get permission from the source and give them credit. Article 15 states, we have an obligation to refrain from making false or misleading statements about other real estate professionals, 
their businesses, and their business practices. This includes the duty to not knowingly or recklessly get this, publish, repeat, retransmit, or republish false or misleading statements made by others. That means keep your finger to yourself. Don't tap the like button. Don't tap the share button and do not comment because as a result, you could essentially publish, repeat, retransmit, or republish false or misleading statements made by others. Also, we're having a lot of dialogue about the business practices of others via social media. I see it a lot on Facebook. Well, there's a thing called antitrust where two or more conspire. Sometimes it look like you guys are conspiring. So to avoid any issues, to not violate Article 15, to not potentially have an antitrust issue, you don't want to publish, repeat, retransmit, or republish information, nor do you want to talk about the business practices of other real estate professionals. These duties apply whether false or misleading statements are repeated in person, in writing, or by technological means, meaning the internet, or by any other means. I have a question for you. Have you ever put your foot in your mouth? And I'm pretty sure you have because I have. We all have. We've had the opportunity to say something we've had no business saying because no one is perfect. I have the opportunity to say things I don't have any business saying on more than one occasion. When I think about Article 15, it is an article I've violated, okay, because I tapped a button. All right. Now, when this occurred, I instantly wanted to delete what had occurred, but I decided that if I deleted it, I would be a hypocrite. So I took a screenshot of everything I've done wrong so that I could share that with other realtors because I want to demonstrate how easy that can happen. Now, this isn't my violation, but this is a violation, right? Um, this is a photo from Facebook, another screenshot I've taken from my mobile device, and it is a bathroom with pink carpeting. And the realtor states, I don't care what you say, pink carpeting is uh, in, in the bathroom. It's so hot right now. Well, I don't know about you, but I would question if pink carpeting in the bathroom is hot right now. As a result, there were 24 people who liked it and four comments at the time that I've taken the screenshot. Well, if the 24 likes and the four comments were from other realtors, essentially they've retransmitted. And this wasn't a positive post. This was a negative post. They were signifying. They were talking about the pink carpeting in the bathroom. So what you want to keep in mind when you see posts like this, no matter what social media channel. Do not take photos while on a showing appointment. This is someone's home, okay? And if you do take the photos, you need to be clear about the intentions of the photo. How is this photo going to be used and stored in the future? Do not post photos from your showing appointments. It isn't your listing. Do not make negative or signifying comments on someone else's listing. Do not like or comment on the negative comments of others. Because if you do so, you are also violating Article 15. So I have a Article 15 case study. Realtor Cuddy Slaughter makes the following comment on Facebook. Black real estate professionals in Chicago are comical. I haven't met a genuinely responsive, forward-thinking, honest, thorough, and black realty pro. Okay, now this is a article I violated. I'm not Realtor Cuddy Slaughter, but let's take a look at what happened. I'm on Facebook. I see the post. The person goes on to state. Um, since I worked with Ron Branch, a.k.a. The Coach in 2008, what's interesting is another trailblazer, Marky Lemons Rao, called there several times while I was with Ron. These two 
are exceptions, though the norm is shade. So the person complimented me, but he dogged all black real estate professionals. Okay. Well, because he complimented me, I then made a comment on his post because of the post he made. And because I commented on that post, I'm also in violation of Article 15. So my post back to him was, thank you. Uh, I feel your frustration. Maybe there is a need for business planning class. Now, as soon as I hit the uh, button, I'm like, "Uh uh-oh, Marky. Yeah, you probably should not have done that. Okay. Um, And I went back and I looked back through the uh, code of ethics and I realized I was clearly in violation of Article 15 because of standard of practice, right? 15-2. I had not knowingly really uh, repeated, retransmitted, and republished false and misleading statements. Okay, so I violated Article 15. Uh, Let's go back and look at the questions. Which article has realtor slaughter violated? Well, he violated Article 15. Realtor Marky Lemons Rowell is tagged in the post made by realtor slaughter and makes the following comment. I feel your frustration. Maybe there is a need for a business planning class. Has realtor Lemons Rowell violated any articles? And if so, which one? I violated Article 15, just like Realtor Cuddy Slaughter had, okay? If Realtor Slaughter and Realtor Lemons Rao have violated an article, what can they do once they realize that they've made a false and misleading statement? And so the National Association of Realtors tells you what to do. You need to delete, remove, and follow up. So I went back to Realtor Slaughter's page and I deleted my comment. But because I was also tagged in the post, I went to Facebook and I wanted to know how to become untagged. And I simply removed the tag. But before I deleted anything, right, I took a screenshot. Because education is key. Now I know better, so I do better. And I have had the opportunity to share my mistake with several of the realtors who I see make the same mistake. I am not the real estate police. I am not going to tell anyone what someone else is doing, but I will send people a message if you are my friend to let you know that you've made a mistake. So then you won't be potentially in trouble. But note, someone could have taken a screenshot of this and they could have sent it into the state. I've already sent my own stuff into the state. OK, so, yeah, I that's why I took the screenshot. That's why I've saved everything, because I am clear I was wrong and that education is key. Ethics. When we think about social media it will generally deal with a issue around conduct, okay? It's going to be something you've said or you've done. Enforcement of the Code of Ethics. Realtor associations are responsible for enforcing the Code of Ethics. Only realtors and realtor associates are subject to the code. Associations do not determine violations of law and regulations. This would be handled by your license and body. So you have to know the difference between license law and the code of ethics because the uh, your, generally your state association or local association will handle all ethics issues where all license law issues will be uh, managed by your state. A realtor or a member of the public may now file a complaint against realtors if you've adopted the new ethics citation program. The new ethics citation program avoids the time consuming hearing process if the respondents agree to the ethics citation outcome. He or she may pay the predetermined fine associated with the article cited in the complaint and avoid a hearing. 
I'm seeing that there's some confusion out here. So because we utilize social media and we work in a global environment online, we have to keep in mind that we all adhere to the same code of ethics, yet we all have a different set of license law rules and regulations. So you, you could have friends, you know, from five, six different states and every last one of you have to do something different. OK, except if you're real to members, adhere to the code of ethics. Well, with the ethics citation program rolling out, um, every state hasn't adopted the same articles under their ethics citation program, because what they've done is they've really aligned their ethics ethics citation program with their state rules and regulations. So I've taught ethics citation or social media ethics in multiple states and every last state has a variance in the rules or regulations, noting that everyone, regardless to the state, still has to adhere to all 17 articles, okay? The ethics citation program is limited to certain article violations. The purpose of the ethics citation program is to allow justice to be served and to protect the real estate industry from unethical conduct. Their fines in each state is a little different. I'm seeing a variance where most fines will start at $250. So if you fail to present a true picture in real estate communications, marketing, and advertising, you can receive a fine of $250. If you fail to disclose your real estate professional status in advertising, marketing, or other representations, you can receive a fine of $250. Um, if you have advertisement offering to sell a lease property without authority of the owner or the listing broker, you can receive a fine of $500. Now, I see this uh, one being violated the most because everyone is posting the listings of others without their consent to do so. The Realtors Code of Ethics was established to protect the buying and selling public. It promotes a competitive real estate marketplace. It enhances the integrity of our industry. It is our promise of performance. It is our promise of professionalism. As a realtor member, you are to adhere to the code of ethics, whether online or offline. And this covers technological means, which includes all of the social media you use. Social media ethics is real. Social media ethics citation is real. I live in a state that one year ago, we adopted the ethics citation program. It's one year later. We have issued 46 citations. And in one week, a few weeks ago, there were six violations filed, and the biggest culprit is Article 12. Make sure that you're adhering to the rules and regulations when you use social media. I would like to thank you for your time and energy today, and note that social media ethics is real, and you want to always adhere to the rules and the regulations. I see I'm going to start recording.